Here's problem 7-5. A block is pushed along a rough horizontal surface from point A to point B by a force, magnitude P equal to 5.4 newtons, as shown in the figure. The magnitude of the force of the friction acting on the block between A and B is 1.2 newtons, and points A and B are 0.5 meters apart. If the kinetic energies of block at A and B are 4 joules and 5.6 joules respectively, how much work is done on the block by the force P between A and B? All right, there's a lot going on here. We've got a force P equal to 5.4 newtons, and it's acting on the block at some angle, but we don't know what that angle is. So it's kind of hard to figure out the work based on that. But we do have uh, points A and points B, and we know that the distance between them is 0.5 meters. We also know that there's going to be a frictional force working against the motion as it's going from A to B, some kind of frictional force like this, and, and that frictional force is given as 1.2 newtons. So, we also know the kinetic energy at A is 4 joules, and the kinetic energy at B is 5.6 joules. I think the best way to start this problem is our one equation to rule them all and just see what, we've, what we have. So if we have the kinetic energy at A plus any potential energy at A plus any work done along the way, it should equal our final kinetic energy at B plus our potential energy at B. Now in this case, we're on a level plane, so there is no change in gravitational potential energy. If we define our gravitational potential energy as zero on this plane, then we have no potential energy due to gravity, and there's no springs involved. So our potential energy at A and our potential energy at B is zero. So we don't have to worry about those terms. So immediately this simplifies that the work done between A and B is equal to the kinetic energy at B minus the kinetic energy at A. Essentially the work done is going to equal the change in kinetic energy. And we already know what these kinetic energies are. They are uh, 5.6 joules at B and 4 joules at A. So our change in kinetic energy is going to be 1.6 joules. That will be the total work done between A and B. But there's actually two works going on here. We have the work done by the force P, and we have the work done by friction. So let's add those together, and that should equal this 1.6 joules. Well, we can't figure out what the work done by P is uh, per se, but we can figure out what the work done by friction is. The work by friction is going to equal a negative frictional force times distance. It's really force times distance cosine of 180 degrees because our displacement is going to the right and our frictional force is going to the left. So there's 180 degrees between their directions. Cosine of 180 is negative 1. So it's strictly a negative force times distance. So this is going to be equal to a negative 1.2 newtons times 0.5 meters or a negative 0.6 joules. So that is the work done by friction. Now if we take this equation here and we solve for the work done by P, that's going to equal 1.6 minus the work done by friction. So that will be 1.6 minus a negative 0.6, which would be 1.6 plus 0.6, or 2.2 joules. So the work done by force P is 2.2 joules, and we found that work without actually having to know the force P, even though we were given that, we didn't have to use that, and we didn't have to know the angle at which it was acting. We just kind of indirectly came up with the work done by that force by solving for everything else, and it came out to 2.2 joules. <laughs>